Hi, this is Harold Hunt with the Real Estate Center at Texas A&M University. I'm in uh, Brenham, Texas today at the Blue Bonnet Electric Cooperative's demonstration home. And we're going to visit with Darren Heine, architect at BBA Architects. So Darren, I was walking up to the house and uh, one of the first things that you notice is in the concrete there's a compass and it shows you north and south. And uh, I assume it's a fairly big deal about how this house is oriented. Tell me a little bit about why you oriented it the way you did. Well, uh, a long time ago before air conditioning, people were really concerned about when the sun came up, when the sun went down, and how that affected their comfort inside of their homes. And I uh, wanted to sort of remind people that it still makes a difference even though you have air conditioning in your home now as to how much energy you want to use inside your house. So uh, typically in the wintertime, the, the sun's really low in the sky, and in the summertime it's, it's fortunately high, so you're able to control that southern exposure and how much radiant heat comes into the building through those windows that you typically want to have on the south side of a building. So uh, there's a reason why we want to sit, stand under shade trees in the summertime. It's because we want to keep that radiant heat from the sun from hitting us. The buildings are the same way. And so I noticed that uh, the construction was out of SIPs. Tell us a little bit about what SIPs are. SIPs are structural insulated panels and they're continuous insulation. Uh, they are very strong and, and sturdy. They are um, uh, what we would call super insulation uh, as far as your, your house goes as opposed to traditional uh, wood construction. Um, and uh, that, that pays big benefits whenever you're talking about having um, 16 inch or 24 inch on center spacing of, of studs versus a continuous wall of insulation. Uh, the percentages uh, of, of insulation versus studs make a big difference in energy efficiency. And I didn't see a lot of incandescent lighting. Well, I didn't see any incandescent lighting here. Tell us a little bit about the lighting. Well, we try to, to uh, use energy efficient lighting now and incandescent, a lot of incandescent lamps are, are not going to, to be produced anymore. Uh, and LED lighting is coming around quite a bit. And it's very uh, close to the, the type of uh, incandescent lighting that we're accustomed to as opposed to fluorescent. It's a more direct light, it's a more natural light. And also the color rendition of the light is very close to a, a color that we, we like in our homes, uh, which is not like what we like in our, in our office buildings. Uh, and it's becoming more cost effective now. So I noticed on the east and west side you have a trellis. Uh, what's the use of the trellis? Well, as opposed to the south side, we can control uh, sun coming into the house on the south side pretty easily because that's the direction the sun goes across the sky. On the east and west sides, the sun is typically very low, both in the winter and in the summer. So it's hard to, to control the amount of heat that's actually going through uh, the walls and the windows. And the windows, of course, the weak, weak link. Although, uh, typically, almost, it seems like always, the, the beautiful view out of the home is to the west. So it's difficult to have windows on the west side or to spend the money on windows on the west side and then also have the sun come in and, and super, or super heat your house. Uh, and it's not pleasant. So the trellises, by sort of extruding that trellis out, provide you a little bit more of sun exposure on the east and west sides, and also still allows to have this beautiful west view, uh, in this case, out, out the side. And, and ideally, you'd like to have plants growing on those trellises, which kind of warms up the house a little bit and, and contributes and brings the house back to the landscaping and, and can, connects the house with the landscaping. And then in the air conditioning system, you chose to use geothermal. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the advantage to that? Geothermal has been around a long time. It's very efficient. Um, the energy efficiency ratios of geothermal as opposed to other types is very high. Um, it is, it's probably the most efficient type. Uh, in this case, we used a vertical uh, well where the uh, tubes are, are down into the earth are, are approximately 300 feet, depending on the location in the state, whether vertical makes sense or not. Um, but it's the most efficient type of air conditioning system you can have. Um, uh, for residences now, and, uh, and there's also uh, some tax credit uh, benefits to that as well. And then you have low flow plumbing fixtures, is that yeah. correct? Low flow plumbing is, is becoming sort of the norm now. Um, uh, the toilets, uh, that's changed several years ago, so uh, unfortunately lots of people like to take showers that, that require a little higher flow. Uh, but that's become sort of the norm now, but it, it's just a way it, as, as we are increasingly and now it's hit our pocketbooks or from a state perspective as far as the water conservation. Uh, it's even more, more important now that we, we conserve water 
on the inside of the building as well as on an irrigation uh, on the exterior of the building, which in my opinion is, is becoming more of an issue than even the, uh, on the inside. We've, we've, with the low flow fix fixtures, we've, uh, we've brought our inside use of water back down to, to minimal, but on the exterior, we're, we've got a long way to go. And then the amount of windows in this home, uh, it's quite a bit. We've got a lot of natural light. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the type of windows and the placement, tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, windows, ideally uh, a home with lots of natural light doesn't require energy for lighting. Uh, this house typically during the day uh, doesn't need to have a light fixture on whenever there's any, any sort of sunlight on the outside. So, uh, and it's more pleasant. Uh, it's, it's very comfortable. It's like you're li living outdoors almost, and we all like to look outdoors. Um, the windows in this house were carefully chosen, uh, both from an economy standpoint as well as from a, an energy efficiency perspective. Um, energy, the windows are the weak link between you and the outside, uh, so they're very important. Uh, air infiltration on these windows is very important. Uh, solar heat gain is the other thing that the energy codes go by. So hope solar heat gain as to uh, the amount of radiating heat that comes in from the sun uh, is big with low E windows, uh, but also being able to see out those windows. That's the other uh, uh, tricky point. The, the more efficient windows have more shading in them, which doesn't allow as much visible light transmittance to come through. So it's an odd sort of feel to have so much shading on the windows. These are, these are not that way. Uh, and then the air infiltration on these windows is very low. Uh, the, uh, the rates on this window is very low. So I assume the payback period and the cost benefit of all these features will vary. Uh, would that be the case? I mean, does it vary a lot depending on certain things? It does vary a lot. It depends on how much you're in the home, how many people are in the home, how you like to control your temperature. Uh, it's obvious that the, the energy of, uh, consumption is going to be much less in a home like this as opposed to a, a conventional um, code compliant home, just minimum code compliant home. Uh, but you know, the, ideally the, the, the payback period is in the 10 to 15 year range for many of these things, especially the things that, that have that sort of lifespan, like your, your mechanical systems, uh, solar or wind. Uh, uh, equipment, you, you certainly want to see the payback before the end of the lifespan of that equipment, so that becomes very important. Things uh, related to the home itself that are permanent, like the envelope of the house, uh, that, that kind of thing will pay, pay back uh, and then extend into whatever lifespan that, that home has, you know, 40, 50 or more years. So those kinds of things are more so important even than the, uh, the equipment that, that will fail over a period of time. And uh, finally, you know, you've, you've merged the aesthetics with the green features really well in this home. Was that something that was difficult to do or easy to do? No, it's not really difficult. It's, uh, in fact, uh, I'm told that when people tour the home that they, they're surprised to see that it feels normal to them. They, they want to see something out of the norm. And so many of the times now, what we see because uh, energy efficient homes are, are seen as a more modern sort of feel, that's not something that people in this area of Texas actually would appreciate and actually would be a turn off, uh, I, in my opinion, would have been a turn off to people to come see the home. So we wanted to, to uh, make the home as still modern in, in feel. It is very a very modern feel, but the traditional form, a very simple shape that's common to Texas and it's, it's this region, uh, that so people will be, begin to appreciate energy efficiency and aesthetics at, at the same time. Well, this has been great. Thank you for your time, Darren. Thank you. We want to thank Darren for coming in today. Now we're with Wes Brinkmeyer of Blue Bonnet Electric Cooperative. So tell me, Wes, what was Blue Bonnet trying to accomplish with this project? The demonstration home is a major educational component for us here at Blue Bonnet Electric. We wanted to give our members the opportunity to see a home in action that's designed energy efficiently. It's designed with conservation in mind. We wanted to be able to see the wind and solar technologies as well as the geothermal air conditioning systems and see them in a real life aspect as well as test them as well and show our members how they perform and what the benefits are to them on their total utility bill. So Wes, there are a lot of sophisticated monitoring features in this home. Tell us a little bit about the monitoring. We have monitoring features in the home to monitor things like the refrigerator, the televisions, the HVAC systems, the lighting to monitor their consumption, as well as production monitoring systems for our wind and solar. 
so that at the end of the day we can take the total home consumption and production and see the true value of this home. And how does lifestyle affect your energy usage? Lifestyle and behavior patterns are tremendous, tremendously important in terms of your energy usage. What you do and the decisions you make on a daily basis in a home like this or in your own home have a tremendous amount of impact on your energy usage. On a home like this, we try to mirror that image and use that in, in our comparison study versus the other homes in our service territory to see how efficient this home really is and how much behavior patterns really matter. So Wes, there are some federal tax credits available. Tell us a little bit about the credits. There are some federal tax credits available for homeowners for things like solar, wind, and geothermal systems within the home, as well as for schools, churches, and businesses as well through the state and federal government. Well, thanks, Wes. We'd like to thank Darren and Wes today for coming out to Blue Bonnet's demonstration home here in Brenham, Texas. I'm Harold Hunt with the Real Estate Center at Texas A&M University.